Well, many are looking across the recent events and news and trying to anticipate what's going to be next with politics, finance, or health. It becomes a little bit like trying to read the weather, any indication to see what's about to happen. And I wonder if we're giving the same attention in the midst of all that to what God is up to. He's always up to something, but sometimes we forget to look for what he has in mind. In fact, Jesus said this to a crowd one time. He said, you know how to read the weather, but you don't know how to read the times. In other words, not watching for what he was up to. One of the things that it seems God is up to in our church is creating a heart for multiplying the good of our lives. Whether it's good resources, good relationships, good strength, but all in the direction of pointing people toward the good news of Jesus. In fact, we've been challenging people to be taking relational risks and investing in other people. We laid this foundation last fall of reaching out and connecting with faces and places. Well, certainly connecting people to Jesus and the good news begins with connecting people right where they are. And I think this season, one of the things God is up to is causing us to take a fresh look at a familiar place. Welcome to my neighborhood. In this time of shelter at home, I've spent more time here than ever. This is where I've been asking the question with God, what are you up to in this season? And I think this is actually part of the answer. A few months ago, the same team that helped put together Faces and Places this last fall, encouraging us to meet people everywhere we go and point them in Jesus' direction, gave us a book called The Art of Neighboring. It's a great, quick read, simple question in that book. What if Jesus, when he said, love your neighbor, meant your actual neighbor? And then it goes through all these different uh, kind of tools and different ways to engage our neighborhoods and build relationships that maybe, yeah, ultimately we would hope people follow Jesus, but in the meantime, just shape some really great friendships and be really generous living like Jesus in the midst of the people that we live next to. I was uh, thinking about this and hadn't really shared it with anybody. And sure enough, yesterday, uh, someone asked the question, what's God up to? And my friend shared this story. So uh, we were all asked last fall as we finished up Faces and Places to put a dot on a map that uh, we thought that God might be leading us to. And I heard him say, not audibly, but in my head, that I should put a dot in my neighborhood. And that was kind of curious to me because I've been in my neighborhood for 23 years. I know everybody by first name, but I don't really know their stories. So last uh, Sunday, Terry and I were out in the driveway. A couple of neighbors drove by that we have, frankly, not really talked to a lot. And they stopped and shouted for uh, several minutes. And then a neighbor across the street came over and he joined in the conversation and started telling us about why they were held up and holed up in their house. Then a neighbor in the corner comes in uh, to the conversation. His wife had passed away earlier in the year, and uh, and he joined our conversation. And ultimately, we were joined by uh, an elderly neighbor who drove by, and uh, he told us uh, uh, some more about how his wife was suffering Alzheimer's. So it was really quite amazing to be in the neighborhood uh, talking to all of these people on a different level than we ever had before. Yeah. It's as if, uh, you know, God knew that COVID was coming and he prepared me for the opportunity to be out there and connect in a way we hadn't before. I love that story and the opportunity that God has been presenting to connect with people around us. He's been doing that in our lives too. In fact, we uh, saw that you could bring a, a frozen ice truck into your neighborhood. And so we did, and our kids distributed a bunch of invites and sure enough, in as safe a way as possible with a bunch of kids, a bunch of people showed up and, and got to buy some ice on one of the hottest days of the year so far. It was awesome. And in just a few hours, we connected with more neighbors than we had in the last five years. And God is paving some ways. There's an openness. There's some opportunity in this season that, that just wasn't there before. In fact, we took a tip out of that book I was talking about, and we made a map of our neighborhood and the people that we're meeting so we don't forget our neighbors' names. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just blank, and then you've seen them too many times, and it's awkward, and we're just trying to pray through that and ask God, what do you have in mind? Enjoying some new friendships, some new connections, and I can tell you so many stories from what God has been up to, and I'm wondering if that's something he might be up to in a lot of our lives. So I just want to encourage you. Maybe God's been up to some cool things in your neighborhood. 
Put those in the comments. Tell us the stories. What opportunities are you seeing and taking? What are you seeing and missing? Maybe you just need to ask God for more opportunity. Uh, and you're just beginning to think about what it would look like to engage our neighbors. But maybe God has placed us, at least for now, in the exact place that he wants us to be. And maybe he has some great opportunities right in front of us. Tell us some stories. Maybe grab the book and give it a read. Take some risky action to engage with some people around you. Relationally risky, not health risky. Relationally risky. And see what God might have in mind in our neighborhoods. God's always up to something. And, and even in this season, it can be really, really great.